How was Jeffrey Dahmer really killed? Like, I know Netflix gave a pretty solid answer to that question in the Dahmer series, but there's still a lot of truth that was left out. And not many people seem to be talking about this, and, well, maybe no one cares, but we definitely do. So, sit tight and relax as we reveal this untold truth. As a part of his usual ritual, Jeffrey Dahmer approached three men at a bar with an offer of $100 if either one agreed to follow him to his house to take some nude photos, have a bottle of beer, and keep him company. One of those men was Tracy Edwards, the man who brought about the end of Jeffrey Dahmer. Edwards took his offer and followed him back to his apartment, but immediately when he got there, he sensed something was way off. The apartment had a horrible stench with a lot of weird things lying around, including two boxes of hydrochloric acid that Dahmer claimed he used to clean bricks. Tracy had the feeling that something wasn't right, but he played along for the time being. After a few moments, Jeffrey took Edwards to his room where he handcuffed one of his hands and then told him to pose for a picture. And that was the last red flag he needed to probably know he was in danger. He noticed Dahmer had a videotape of the Exorcist 3 playing. And then Dahmer came really close to him, unbuttoned his shirt, and told him that he was going to rip his heart out and eat it while holding onto a knife. Now, this is where you know Mother Nature gave Tracy Edwards some luck that day. After managing to keep a solid conversation going and convince Dahmer that he wasn't going to escape, he asked to use the bathroom, and immediately he realized Dahmer wasn't holding onto the handcuffs anymore. He punched him in the face and ran out of his apartment. Just like I said, the guy had some freaking luck because immediately he got out on the road and ran into two cops, Robert Roth and Rolf Mueller, at the corner of North 25th Street. Now this was around 11 p.m. on July 22nd, 1991, and Tracy had been held captive by Jeffrey for over five hours. Both officers accompanied Edwards back to Dahmer's apartment, and after close inspection, one of the officers found Polaroid pictures, many of which were of human bodies in various stages of dismemberment, and seeing that those those pictures had the exact same background as that of Dahmer's apartment, the officers pinned him to the ground and arrested him. After further investigation into Dahmer's apartment was carried out, the Milwaukee Police Criminal Investigation Bureau found seven human skulls, some of which were painted, a human head in the fridge, and another set of human heads placed in different corners of his room, three human skeletons, a human heart, and a chunk of muscles kept in store just like normal food, along with some other crazy stuff that made the chief medical examiner at the scene make this statement. It was more like dismantling someone's museum than an actual crime scene. After 13 years of his killing spree, and after standing trial for 15 counts of first-degree murder, Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences in February 1992 and was given an extra life sentence on May 1, 1992, for the killing of his first victim, Stephen Hicks. Many activists and relatives of Dahmer's victims insisted he should have been given the death penalty. This wasn't possible because capital punishment was abolished in Wisconsin in 1853. However, Jeffrey was ready for whatever happened to him at that point. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like he didn't know how to express pity, regret, or even sadness to the relatives of his victims. And in one of his interviews, he made it known that if he could give his life to bring back all the victims he killed, he would certainly do so. But I guess it was too late. Dahmer's sentence was estimated to run for 900 years, meaning he was never going to be able to see the light of day as a free man again. He spent the first year of his sentence in solitary confinement due to concerns about the safety of what could happen if he stayed with the other inmates. But after a year, Dahmer pleaded to be transferred to a less secure prison unit. His plea was accepted, and he was transferred to the Columbia Correctional Institution, where he found a new religion and where his killer, Christopher J. Scarver, came into the picture. While in prison, Jeffrey Dahmer became a born-again Christian and was baptized on May 10th, 1994. But despite his newfound religion and newly found self, in this less secure prison, Dahmer, his lawyer, and his parents all knew he was walking into a one-way death trap, and the only way to get out of it was with his death. But like I said earlier, Dahmer wasn't phased by this. In fact, after his baptism, he was pretty much ready for whatever happened to him, and even felt he was sinning against God for being alive. However, on July 3, 1994, a fellow inmate named Osvaldo Dorothy attempted to slit Dahmer's throat with a razor embedded on a toothbrush as Dahmer sat in the prison chapel after a weekly church service was concluded. Now, this attack only left Dahmer with an injury, until Christopher, who, in my opinion, is more or less a slightly tuned-down version of Dahmer himself, 
sealed his fate. Christopher Scarver was serving a life sentence for a murder he committed back in 1990. Chris murdered a co-worker named Steve Lohman by firing four gunshots straight into his head before demanding his boss write him a check for $3,000, which in today's world would sum up to about six or $7,000. The police later found Chris sitting in front of his girlfriend's house with the gun he used to commit the murder and the check his boss had written him. And according to Mr. Scarver, a set of voices in his head told him to do it. So it kind of made sense when he said another voice told him to kill Dahmer. God told me to do it. You'll hear it on the 6 o'clock news. Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dahmer are dead. Those were the words from Christopher J. Scarver to a prison warden the day he murdered Jeffrey in cold blood. Chris and a few other inmates at the Columbia Correctional Institution outside Madison, Wisconsin were disgusted at Jeffrey after hearing of his crimes through the news. On November 28, 1994, Christopher Scarver, Jeffrey Dahmer, and another inmate named Jesse Anderson, who was in prison for the murder of his wife, were on custodial duty within the prison facility. This activity was supervised by three prison wardens, but after a few minutes, all three left. And while that in itself seems very odd, Christopher seized the opportunity to do what many people call Jeffrey Dahmer's well-deserved poetic justice. Christopher carefully stole and concealed a 20-inch metal bar in his clothing while cleaning up the prison gym. And when the trio got to cleaning the gym showers, Chris viciously attacked him with a metal bar, fracturing his head in the process. And according to Christopher's latter statements on the incident, Dahmer didn't fight back. He wasn't scared to die at that point. In fact, he was embracing it. Christopher also attacked Jesse Anderson who at this point was just a victim of circumstance in the whole massacre. Jeffrey Dahmer severely fractured his skull, and at exactly 8.10 a.m. that day, Dahmer was found lying in a pool of his own blood. Now, some members of the public and relatives of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims were pleased with his death and even sent Christopher Scarver thank you cards, while for others, it didn't change anything. But with Dahmer gone, it was time for Scarver to face the consequences of his actions. Christopher first pleaded not guilty to the murder of Jeffrey Dahmer and Jesse Anderson. He went straight for that insanity card, getting inside court, hearing, singing, and looking unstable. However, no one was buying the theatrics. And after Scarver was deemed fit to stand trial, he was given two additional life sentences for both murders. It was believed Chris had a motive to destroy Dahmer and Anderson, who were both white because Dahmer's victims were primarily black males, and Anderson, who had stabbed his wife to death, attempted to frame two black males as the perpetrators. In September of 1995, Jeffrey Dahmer's body was cremated, and as a part of his will, he asked for his ashes to be shared with both his parents, while his mother wanted his brain preserved in hopes of having it studied. But after a long dispute between his parents, Jeffrey Dahmer's brain was eventually cremated in December 1995. 